Hey everybody, good morning y'all. Got a nice topic of discussion I want to do with you brothers as a part of my body, spirit, and soul series. I figured I need to start with the body so you guys can understand the importance of sex and marriage. And I want to talk about it from a biblical perspective and I want to line it up precept upon precept, line upon line. I took some notes, so this is part one. I will have a part two, maybe a part three. Depends on how long um, I have to explain this topic. I stay on this topic as far as much as possible. But the title of this video is called The Savior of the Body, The Mysteries of Sex and Marriage. I hope you guys enjoy this video. We watch this video as much times as possible to get as much insight and take notes. Because I took notes and I'm going to explain it. Now, the savior of the body is a mystery. Now, we know when we link all this stuff up together, then we're going to get a bigger understanding of why Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. You got to understand the story of Adam and Eve. And you're going to see a foreshadowing of things to come in the future based on the story of Adam and Eve. Based on what I've written. And what I'm going to discuss with you, brothers and sisters. So I hope you have your handy dandy notebook ready because I'm about to go in. Now, in Romans 12, verse 4 and 5, it talks about, For as just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So I'm explaining the lesser and I'm explaining the greater, right? The lesser is the physical body. The greater is the spiritual body. The spiritual body will always be greater than the lesser body. So when we talk about Christ, we're always talking about the greater. When you're talking about self and a woman is the lesser. I'm going to show you how it all ties in because I've written this down. And I, I try to explain as best as possible. Hopefully, you guys can piece, the, piece together the puzzle yourself as well. So, the microcosmic and the macrocosmic. Macro means big. Micro means small. So, from the microcosmic understanding say for as just as each of us has one body it's referring to us men right as many members and these members do not all have the same function what are the members the members are your body parts your eyes your nose your mouth your teeth your ears your hearing your sap all these different things that make up who you are the different atoms in the cells in the body the bones the different organs those are the members of your body Right? Your body. You have one body. You have one mind. You have one soul. You have one spirit. You feel what I'm saying? Very understand. Very straight to the point. And I know oh, I got a million different parts of me. It's one being. You have one body. Right? You have many members within that body. The reason why your body is has different members because they all have different functions. It says... And these members do not all have the same function. So your heart doesn't have the same function as your brain. Your brain has a different purpose in the body than your hands, your feet, your nose. So once you understand your function, or what we are like to say in Midtown and in more and Red Pill groups, finding your purpose, being on your purpose, right? This is I'm going I'm to reinvent that word purpose on a spiritual level. I know that a lot of brothers talked about being on your purpose, but most of these things of what people are telling you or dating coaches are telling you to be on your purpose is to be self-serving, right? Nothing wrong with that. You got to take care of what you got to take care of. But I'm talking about from an aspect of spirituality. You knowing the purpose of who you are created to be based on God's will for your life will change everything. Because even if you say, I'm going to be a rapper, and that's what you want to do, 
That's not truly fulfilling your spirit if that's not what God called you to do. You could say, okay, I want to be a doctor. But what if God wants you to be a prophet? But you wanted to do it because I maybe I want to be a doctor because my peoples wanted me to be, they're pushing me in this direction. Also, I'm interested in this and that. But you don't question or discern where these thoughts are coming from. You're going to do the will of the flesh and not the will of God, which is spirit. So when everybody is in one body and they're one member, even though they have different functions, they all have to account, be held accountable to that one body. They all help bring together the functionality of the physical. So from this perspective of Romans 12 verses 4 and 5, in the first verse it says, For as just as each of us has one body, with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. Now let's link it to the micro macrocosm, which will be the bigger body, right? So in Christ, we, though many, so listen to this. So in Christ, we, though many, many bodies in this one body. So with the body of Christ, Remember, I told you the spiritual body is bigger than the physical. Your spiritual being is bigger than your physical being, right? So in Christ, this is your greater, the greater, the greater aspect beyond self, right? So when we learn to get out of ourselves and find out the greater purpose in our lives based on our creator's will for our life, we start to come into the body of Christ. We start to realize that. Maybe I'm not an eye. Maybe I've been acting like the eyes all the time, always trying to see shit. But maybe I'm supposed to be the nose. I'm supposed to smell shit. You understand? Or I'm the I'm the hands. I'm supposed to do things with my hands. So I'm saying I'm um, the feet. I'm supposed to be marching. I'm a soldier. I'm a trooper. So I'm saying once you find out what you are in the body of Christ, this is where the scripture applies right here. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, the church. I'm going to get into that just now. The body is the church of Christ, right? And each member belongs to all the others. So now you're going to understand the importance of church. Even though I do talk in my video, I say I don't go to church. And the church is messed up because they got preachers and, and all these people in this church is having sex with everybody. And, and it's crazy. But... When I explain this to you, brothers and sisters, now you understand the importance of the church and the body and sex and marriage, then you're going to see the true agenda of the enemy, which I want to get to at least in part two or part three of this video, to expose the enemy's plan. Why is, it, why is he so against families? Why is he against the man and the woman? Why does he have these different groups out here that's having them going against each other? You got the midtown going against the women because they like, yo, these women's fucked up out here. Then you got the feminists they're going against the Me Too movement. They're going against the men because they want to have power, control. But when we go by the scriptures, this has nothing to do with me or with you. This has to do with what God wants his church to be. Okay, so let me read another scripture so I can break it down even more. Now that I explain that, and so in Christ, so though we many form one body, each member belongs all to others. So within this body of Christ, we all have different roles to play, right? And we must fulfill those roles. We must have status. We must know our rank in the hierarchy. Right? Cool. So now I'm going to bring it down to Genesis 2, verses 22 and 20 through 22. Let me say that again. Genesis 2, verses 22 through 24. So I'm going to break it down, nigga man style for you. It says, Then the Lord God made a woman out of the rib which he has taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man, and the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. For she was taken out of man. And this is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. 
they say they, that they become one flesh, that means they become one body. Let me, let me link the similarities or the correspondence to Genesis 2, verses 22 through 24. Let me make the spiritual connection between that Genesis 2, verses 22 through 24, to when Christ died on the cross for our sins. And let me show you how the woman represents the church, which will be Eve, right? And man represents Christ with Adam because Adam, he was the first Adam, the physical Adam who started everything was the first. Jesus Christ represents the second Adam. He represents the last Adam. So the last Adam is greater than the first. So when you start to understand this logic, when you look at the Bible, you can see that the Bible is speaking in parables, but it's speaking about revelation and his mysteries. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the second Adam, but the, the second Adam is greater than the first because the spiritual will always be greater than the physical. Do you understand? So when Christ said he's married to the church, he's talking about the spiritual woman, the bride of Christ. And that's why he always says, I'm coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Right? This is, this is where the rapture happens. This is where we have those glorified bodies. Peace, sister. You know, this is where you get the glorified bodies. Right now, we in corrupted bodies. We in defiled bodies. This is why we have all these rules. This is why we're subject to different laws. This is why we're subject to the law. Right? But when we walk in the spirit, we do not satisfy the desires of the flesh because we're walking in the second Adam. We're learning how to think like the second Adam. And this is why it says put away the old man because the old man represents the first Adam. Right? Which represents our flesh. But Christ represents the spiritual, the spirituality, represents the spiritual flesh, the glorified body. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me get into this because I wrote it down. I said the body of Christ and the church are interchangeable because just like the first Adam gave birth to Eve from his rib. Right? Let's go back to Genesis 2, verses 22 through 24. And the Lord God made woman from the rib that he has taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man. Right? So he's presenting this woman that he fashioned out of the rib of Adam to the man. Doesn't the scripture say that Christ fashioned the church out of his body? Right? Through his crucifixion. And he's going to present a church to him without spot or wrinkle. Can you see the connection? So, and then the man said, this is now bone of bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of the man. And this is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Now, look at this. Same goes for Christ, the second Adam, who bore the church, the bride of Christ, from his death, when the soldier pierced his side and water and blood came out. Remember when, the, remember when the soldiers after Christ gave up the ghost? He said, it is done. And the soldiers pierced his side and water and blood came out. That was what, would hap what was happening in Genesis was a foreshadowing of the death of the Messiah. What would have to take place at the cross. You, now you're getting the bigger picture. Seeing something now? Okay, so the second Adam, Jesus Christ, represents the spiritual, while the first Adam represents the physical. Now, how does this link to marriage? Because a man and woman becomes one flesh when they have sex. When they have sexual intercourse, that's the true marriage. You understand? This is why Christ talks about in the Bible about, for, this is why he says against fornications, why he says so against sexual immorality this is why he's against putting away your wives this is why he's talking a lot in the bible about people who does these type of things i understand i want you to get a big understanding of marriage and the spiritual coverings okay so in ephesians 5 verses 22 and 23 it says wives submit yourself unto your own husbands as you do to the lord Right? For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. 
I'm gonna repeat that again. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, linking the microcosm to the macrocosm, comparing the microcosm to the macrocosm, create comparing the lesser to the greater. Christ is the greater. The husband is the less. The husband is a representation of the Lord. How do you know this to be true? Because if you read in Genesis with Abraham and Sarah, Sarah calls Abraham Lord. Maybe not in a big case, a uppercase L, but in a lowercase L. Because the reason why the Bible labeled um, Abraham as Lord in a lowercase L represents a title. Remember, man was in God's image and likeness. He's supposed to be a physical representation of what God is in the heavens, right? So in the marriage, the husband is the physical representation of Christ and the wife is supposed to be the physical representation of the bride of Christ or the church. You feel what I'm saying? And the members is like, they, and they have kids. These are the members. They all have this family. It starts a family. So the body of Christ is a family. The church is a family. It births new seed. It brings new sons and daughters of God. So when we go to church and we repent and we go to church and we get right with God, we become sons and daughters of the Most High. This is why we have to be spiritually baptized. Now that you understand. Just like how you have to have physical sex in order to procreate, you have to allow the word of God to get into your spirit man and into your body to reproduce and create the spiritual man, to give birth to that spiritual man as above, so below, as within, so without. So you got to understand the parables. You got to understand the metaphors. Now it says, wife, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. And for husbands is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church and his body, which he is the savior. What's the title of this video? The savior of the body. And we're going to understand the mysteries of sex and marriage. So the man is the savior of the body of woman because he is the head of woman. I know some of you feminist sisters going to come over here and say, I don't need a man. But based on scriptures and based on what I've channeled and, and came up with, based on all the scriptures lining up, because I didn't write the Bible, right? You have an innate need to be protected. You have an innate need to be provided for. You have an innate need to be loved and adored and, and worshipped, right? These are things that are needs, necessities, right? This all comes with the covering. This all comes with the protection. This all comes with the husband, right? The husband's supposed to give you what is rightfully due to you. He's supposed to protect. He's supposed to provide for you. He's supposed to take care of you. You feel what I'm saying? He's not supposed to be pumping and dumping you and leaving you. He's not supposed to just use you whatever he wants to use you and then abuse you and all that because he's the head. He has to be held accountable. Remember, woman came out of the rib of man, right? So let me let me go with my, my notes because I want to get off topic. The physical marriage between man and woman represents the marriage between Christ and his church. Remember, church, remember Christ said he's coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle. Guys, how you treat your wife and wife, how you treat your husband will dictate if you go to heaven or hell. Because Christ said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, right? If Christ is the savior of the body, then it's safe to assume that God created man to be the savior of his woman's body. This is why man is the head of woman. Man serves as a physical protective covering of the woman's physicality and well-being, while God serves as the spiritual covering, equaling a double covering for the woman. I'm going to repeat it one more time if you missed it the first time. If Christ is the savior of the body, right, then it's safe to assume that God created man, which will be Adam, to be the savior of his woman's body, Eve. 
This is why man is the head of woman. Man serves as the protect physical protective covering of woman's physicality and well-being, while God serves as the spiritual covering, equaling a double covering for the woman. So women, when you say, I don't need a man, but you say, I'm praying to God for a man, what, what logic does it make? Because I want to be independent I don't need a man to tell me what to do, but I still need a man to take care of my needs. A marriage comes with those things. You have to abide by those rules. The man is your head for a reason because he serves as the physical atom. He serves as the physical covering. He serves as the physical protection. He serves as the physical affection, right? Christ will be the spiritual. What Adam will be in the physical. Why? Because a woman is the church. She's a representation of the church. She's supposed to bring forth good fruit. So a woman without a covering, a woman that's having sex out of marriage, a woman that's having children out of wedlock will create bad fruit that will be similar to what the churches are creating today. Do you see the connection now? The churches are creating bad fruit because the pastors who's supposed to pastor the people in the churches are creating false doctrine, teaching false doctrine, which will be semen because word, the word of God is like life to the body. Just like how semen gives life to newborn kids, right? So the word is equivalent to the seed of man. A man plants a seed in a woman, nine months, she gives forth fruit. The word of God gets inside of your body and inside of your soul and get inside of your spirit. And he produces sons and daughters of God, right? He produces good fruit. That's the spiritual. So has above, so below, has within, so without. I'm connecting two things. So when you got people who's supposed to teach you the true doctrine of what Christ was teaching when he was alive, repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Get right with the Most High. Get under the blood and the covering of the of Jesus Christ. Seek God and His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added on to you. Get baptized. Get the Holy Spirit on the inside. Seal with the Holy Spirit. Right. Get work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Warn people about the the damnation of hell. No pastor or these people on YouTube ain't teaching you about get right with the most high. Get right before you before you leave this world. That person will damn you to hell. Now, let me link this to the man's position and role for the woman, because I just gave you an example of Christ and the church. Christ said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. If if the church don't have a if the church has spots or wrinkles, then you can't. He's not gonna marry you because in his eyes he look at you as the harlot because you are worshiping other gods. You're entertaining other philosophies. You're entertaining false doctrines. Just like if you're in a marriage, right? Let's talk about it physically. You're in a marriage with a woman, but this woman is entertaining other men. She is sleeping with other men. She's defiling her temple with other men's words, thoughts, seed. It will bring forth bad fruit. Do you get what I'm saying? So this is what happened in the Garden of Eden and why God was upset with Adam because Adam was supposed to be that protective covering over Eve to prevent Eve from eating that tree eating from that tree of good and evil, also to, to not even entertain that, to give some type of form of punishment because he is the head. But no, he hearkened on to the voice of his wife. Why? Because man's weakness is sex. The love of his woman, right? So the, the, the fear of losing his woman, the fear of... Get um having her be destroyed by God 
or something like that because we don't know what would have happened if if Adam did step up, maybe God would have replaced her with somebody else. But he was afraid of losing that. So this is where the scriptures come in where it's about man seek the gift more than the giver or the, you worship the creature more than the creator. This is what gets God very angry with y'all, men. We worship women. Let's keep it real, brothers. You see a nice peer, piece of ass, tits, face on your Instagram or Facebook, you guys are going buck wild. Y'all in the DMs, y'all in these women DMs, you're sending all kind of dick pics, all kind of type of pics. Feel what I'm saying? But you got to have that under control because if you don't have control over your own body, then you merge with a woman, become one body, one flesh, one mind, one, you know, one flesh with this woman. You, this is where, the, this is where the, the battle of supremacy for power comes into play. Because when God put the curse on the woman, he said, in childbearing, you will give, in pain, you will give childbearing, right? And he, and she, and he said, that her desire will be to serve her, the, the, her desire will be to overrun her husband or overrule her husband, right? But he will overrule you. So right there, he was trying to put everything back in order because the ultimate thing that Satan was trying to do, he was trying to flip the natural order of how God set up the universe. God set up the universe like this. God is ahead of Christ. Christ is the head of man, man is the head of woman, right? That's how the natural order was, right? Because in the beginning was the word and the word was the God and the word was God. So God, man, woman, that's the natural order. Why? Because each person has a different responsibility than the other. God represents the spiritual, man represents the physical. Woman represents the church. They bring forth fruit. She represents the earth. That's why, why you always think they call it Mother Earth. She's supposed to bring forth good fruit. If the man is not planting good seed, woman, she's going to bring forth bad fruit. The reason why God doesn't like sex outside of marriage is because when you have sex outside of your marriage covenant, and we all did this. We all had sex with different people. So we all adulterators. We all fornicators. When you fornicate outside of your covenant, and then you come back to your covenant, you defile the temple. When you adulterate your body, you defile the temple. Let's go to scriptures. Let's go to scriptures. Okay? Let me bring this up for y'all. It says, do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, who's in you, whom you have received from God? You are not of your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This links back to the blood of Jesus. Jesus bought us with his blood, right? He had to get us washed the way. He had to get the old sins washed away. He had to get the old nature destroyed. God didn't die. We think, oh yeah, God died on the cross. God never died on the cross. It was the body that Christ was in that was the sacrifice that died on the cross. He killed the old nature. He killed the old man, which is what? The first Adam. Because the first Adam failed. His nature became corrupted with sin. Remember, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were pure. They only knew good. They did not know evil. When they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, their nature became evil because they were naturally ready good. So they ended up creating a double nature. They already had the, the ability to choose because God gave them free will. You feel what I'm saying? And that free will wanted to experience the curiosity what Eve had when she earth good and evil. She wanted to be like who? God, she wanted to know what evil was like because everything they experienced in the garden was good based on God's standards. It was good. So they never experienced 
evil. It was curious. It was curiosity. Now, we, in our nature as human beings, we this is why we are attracted to bad people. This is why we are attracted to bad circumstances. This is why we always seek negative things or we seek out negativity, even though we might say out of our mouth, I don't like haters. But why are you always worrying about your haters? Oh, I don't like that. But you always looking at their pages and jerking off to their pictures. You women say, oh, I don't like bad boys. I'm looking for a good husband. But you always fucking with the thugs, the pookies, and the ray rays. Why? Because in you is naturally evil because of the corruption of the tree of good and evil. Your nature was not of God anymore. Your image became the image of the beast. It's no longer the image of God. So this is why Jesus Christ told the people when he was uh, when he was walking around the town and they were asking questions like, yo, you do the will of your father, the devil. Why? Because their nature is that of the beast. Look at the number of man. The number of man is six. What is six, six, six? The number of the beast. We could link all these different things up and come to the same conclusion because truth is truth and the Bible is right in front of y'all with truth. You understand? Now, how do we get back to being that church without spot or wrinkle? We must line our lives up. We must line our marriage up. If you're in a marriage or a relationship, are you with a woman or with a man? You have to line up with the biblical way. There's no other way. One man, it says every husband, every man get their own woman and every woman get their own man. Now, I understand for the mid-top brothers, some of you guys might want to go monk mode. Some of you guys might do the pump and dump. Some of you motherfuckers might be in a relationship. Some of you guys might be in, in a marriage. But the Bible doesn't care about what I like. The Bible doesn't care about what you like. The Bible is strictly against all of us. Because our way, if our way was right, then the Bible would be agreeing with what we think. Theology, ideologies, all these philosophies is man-made. That's why we could that's why it's so easy for us to get into groups and organizations that agree with our pain and with our struggle instead of just dealing with the truth, whether it hurts us or not. You think God cares about how you feel? He's no respect of any persons. If he say you're lukewarm, you're lukewarm. Because I heard it from the most high himself. Neil, you need to get it together. You moving lukewarm. And that's why I'm going to preach the gospel as, as much as I have breath in this body. And God is God willing to help me be on this path. I can't speak for my future. God has my future in his hand. But I, as long as I'm alive and I have breath in his body and the spirit has given me the, the, the auction to speak this truth, I'm, I'm good with that. Whether you accept it or reject it, the choice is yours. Just like how Adam and Eve had the choice to eat from the tree or not to eat from the tree. You have the choice to get married or not to get married. I'm just giving you the understanding in the higher mysteries of sex and marriage, if you have sex with somebody, you become one flesh with that individual. That is the true marriage. You think that marriage is based on legal documents. We have to look at the Bible and see what marriage really is. You understand? Because look, I'll give you another example. You can hold the title of wife and husband without even having sex. When, when we bring the scriptures up, Joseph and Mary before they had Jesus Christ, Mo, um, Joseph found Mary with child already. Even though she was a virgin, she was never touched by a man. She never knew a man. But they were engaged. So the simple fact that you're even engaged, you hold the title of husband and wife, but you didn't consecrate the marriage because sex is the consecration of marriage. You get it. So when you have sex with somebody, you're consecrating a holy covenant or unholy covenant. When you engage, 
right? And then you have sex. It is the right way of how to be married because not only that your family and people are witness to that, but the heavens are witness to that because after Jesus was born, then Joseph knew his wife. Ah, Joseph, when they say knew, that means having sex. When they say knew not, that means they weren't intimate. The Bible talks a lot about sex. And see, if you don't understand the meaning and the parables and the deeper understandings, you're going to miss the whole story. See, I'm bringing some red pill stuff to y'all guys that a lot of the other brothers who be talking about red pill or not. They talk about how to get a woman, what to avoid with these women, all this different stuff, but they're not telling you why is marriage important. They're going to talk against it because of the system and how the system's corrupted. And I, I do agree with the brothers on that because the system is designed to destroy marriages. And you are catering to the agenda of the elites by giving in to the, the chaos. Fuck what the society is saying. Fuck what the society is doing. What is the Bible telling you to do? What is the scriptures telling you to do? Right? The scriptures say, be holy as I am holy. Seek God and his righteousness. So his righteousness be pertains to his ways if you're going to say you're godly you got to be made in his image and likeness that means you got to be born again in the spirit because god is what spirit so when christ is talking about spiritual rebirth he's talking about being born spiritually if you're not born in your spirit man and you don't change your old ways meaning renewing your mind you're always going to be attracted to doctrines that cater to your feelings to your emotions. That's why the church is with spots and wrinkles. That's why the church is corrupted and bearing bad fruit. Because you have people that's coming in with false doctrines and heresies and no one with the right authority is checking these brothers and sisters coming in the church. You got women preachers. You got women deaconess and all that. Where do you find that in the Bible? You might have women prophetess. Yes, they were prophetess. But they deaconess and all these other elders and shit. These things are false doctrines catering to a ge an agenda. The man is the head of the church. The woman might be the first lady, but she is not the head of the church. So if you see a, a woman pastor teaching and preaching, I would tell y'all beware that. Now, that might sound sexist to some of you women that may be watching and, and go to a church with women preachers. But that woman is operating under a Jezebel spirit. Because if it doesn't line up with the scriptures, then you're doing the wrong thing. You understand? It's not saying that woman doesn't have a role in the church, but it's definitely not a pastor. Or co-heirs with the pastor. Like, the pastor is supposed to be a man. I'm speaking old school doctrine. I'm speaking old school the way how the, the Bible is supposed to be taught, whether you like it or not. Because I'm not, I'm not trying to side with men or women. I'm siding with God. Not my, it's not my will, but let his will be done. The savior of the body is Christ. Christ saves the body. He, he, he saves the church. Man is married to woman. He's the Lord. He, he, he's the Lord of that woman's life. He protects, he provides, and he, he gives that woman that what's rightfully due to her. Now, for the woman, here's the flip side. God is the covering of man. But you women are, the if you're in a marriage with a man, you are the covering of that man's body. Let me, let me bring up the scripture. Let me bring up the scripture to validate this because I just don't want to say stuff out of my, my ass and then you guys don't, you know, follow. It says, husbands, love your own wives. Let's see what this should say. But husband and wives. On husbands and wives. Okay. I'm going to bring it up. Just give me a second. And... Uh, let me find this shit. I'm gonna find it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you an understanding of what 
I said by a woman is also the covering of a man's body. Because y'all become one flesh. And I'm going to flip it on you. Okay? So, it says in Ephesians 5 verse 25, for husbands, this means love your wives. This is Christ loved the church. He gave up life for her. Right? Okay, there we go. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave up himself for her that he may sanctify her, having her cleansed by washing of water with the word, so that he may present a church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she may be holy without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loved his wife loved himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes just as Christ does the church. This is a this is a um warning to you guys. So you guys is pumping and dumping, not showing no care for the sisters. The Bible talks about when you have sex with a woman, you become one flesh as your wife. So you just doing the same thing that your dad did to you when you were young, walk out of your life. Especially if you got kids. Yeah, man. That's why you got to be careful what you're hearing. Because faith comes by hearing the word. Words get into your ears. It gets into your soul. It gets into your heart. If you already have bitterness in your heart and somebody's feeding you bitter words, all you do is feeding that demon. You get what I'm saying? That's, 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 that's what you're doing. You're not, you're not doing anything new. <laughs> and, and two, the more you feed that, the more hatred you have. That's why a lot of you guys are incels. I'm keeping it real with you because you're not healing the wounds. You're not hearing the truth. You're hearing half-truths. All you're hearing is, okay, these females are like this and that and this. That may be true. But how is these words affecting you? Same thing with you women. All you hear is niggas ain't this and niggas ain't that. And you're like, yes, I experienced that because a guy did this to me. And that guy did this to me when I was a kid. Guy did that. And guess what? All you're just doing is feeding that trauma. All you're just doing is feeding that hurt. And you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to heal you, to renew your mind, renew your spirit, so that when you attract the right man, it will be the right man. And guys, when you attract the right woman, it will be the right woman. Yes, you got to go through trial and error. I get that. But... To hold hatred and animosity, all you're just doing is fulfilling the will of the devil. Just like what Christ said, the will of your devil, the father, your father, you will do. You understand? Now, for the wives, I was looking for this one. The wives must respect a husband. Wives, this is how you love your husband. You give him respect. You stay in your place. Yes, I'm going to say to y'all, if y'all some sisters is wild and, 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 and talk to niggas crazy, I'm telling y'all, zip it. Respect your man. He's your head. If you don't like your head, then you should have never messed with him in the first place. You feel what I'm saying? You might not like what God said, but he's our head. Because at the end of the day, we are held accountable to him. These bodies are not our own. It belongs to God. You understand? So if God set a law and an order and in, 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 in the hierarchy of things, you have to respect that. Now, I know some of you women been bitterly hurt by men. You've been done wrong by men. And I would like to apologize on the behalf of men. If we done anything to you sisters that violated you sexually, physically, emotionally, spiritually, in any type of way, I do apologize. But we gotta allow, we gotta allow ourselves to heal. We have to allow ourselves to forgive. We have to allow ourselves to receive the Holy Spirit so that we can walk in the truth of the light. You understand? Now, this is the scripture I was looking for. First Corinthians 7, verse 3 and 5. 3 through 5, right? It says the husband should fulfill his marital duties to his wife, and likewise the wife to our husband. What is the marital duty? Sex. What's what is the topic of this video? The mysteries of sex and marriage, right? The husband should fulfill his marital duties to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body. 
but yields it to our husband. So wives, when you saying it's not my body is my choice, I, I will abort this kid because it's in my body. First off, y'all are on flesh. Two, his seed is in you. That's y'all child. You kill that child, you will have to answer to God. Man, if you spill that seed on the floor, like owning, you will die. God did kill owning for doing that in the Old Testament, right? It says, the wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to the husband. In the same way, does the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. This is what it means to be one flesh. Let me break it down to you midtown niggas and you feminists. Keeping it real. Okay, how you feel. When you become one flesh, when you become husband and wife, you are the savior of the body. A wife is the savior of a man's body. She is the, she is the physical, spiritual covering of a man's sexual nature. Why? Why? Because when she's married to that man, she's supposed to satisfy the duty. She's supposed to perform those marital duties. So if a man needs sex, we don't want sex. We need that. That is food for a man. And if a woman cannot sexually satisfy a man, this is why in the Old Testament you had concubines. A concubine is not a, a, a whore. A concubine is a half-wife. Let's say if a woman's womb was barren and she couldn't produce male heirs, she would have used, get her mate, like, like, at, like Abraham and Sarah. Sarah had the bond. That was a concubine. That was a half-wife. Why? Because her womb, Sarah's womb was barren at the time. She couldn't produce fruit. Same thing with Jacob. Jacob had a lot of wives. He created... He created the tribe of Israel. The nation of Israel was created out of the loins of Jacob. So for you, you got to understand your place, women. And men, you got to take accountability, man. You can't have sex with these sisters and, 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 and think it's okay and I could just move on and I want my freedom. No, if you have a kid with this woman, Y'all are in a covenant with God. You're going to have to answer to God, brother. I'm a man too. I like having multiple women. I tell anybody, I tell any woman I'm dealing with, look, I, I'm a whoremonger. I'm, I like sex. But when it comes to the word, the word is against me just as much as it's against anyone in y'all. We got to learn to follow this book correct. You understand? It says, look, the wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband in the same way. The husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourself to prayer. Then come again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of control. It gave you the problem and it gave you the solution. Let me point it out. Women, when you don't give your body to your man and you're like, I'm on my period, we understand that. We'll let you rock because it says, do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time. So you may devote yourself to prayer. If you women on your period, you should be fasting and purging and cleansing. Men, you should be doing the same. You should stay away from your wife because when you know when they're on their period, they act all crazy. They're emotional. But when that's done, then come together again so Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Men, we got to keep it real with ourselves. We are weak to sex. We are vulnerable to nice ass and tits, right? And a pretty face. Women could, women are more superior than us when it comes to sex. So this really applies to you women as well, where it talks about do not deprive each other. A lot of you women use sex as a weapon against men, and I'm going to call y'all out on this video right now. If you're doing that right now, stop it. That's why your relationship is all falling apart. That's why you can't get a good man. Because your mindset is corrupted, it's defiled by men that you've been sleeping with. You can't trust a man. If you know you cannot trust a man, sister, 
then you shouldn't be in no relationship with no man. You should take the time and purge and get right with God and let God present that man to you, right? Because if you don't want to follow the ways of the most high, but expect to get a good man, you're going to corrupt that good man. Just as much as the men corrupt the good women. We're going to keep it balanced. Feel what I'm saying? When you're in a relationship, you're having sex, that's a marriage. Right? It says, the wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. Many means yield. Give over. Submit. Yeah, I know y'all don't like that word, but submit. Right? Same way the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Guys, you got to give the dick. If you, if you got problems down there, you need to go check that out. I already talked about this. Stop masturbating because they open the door to spiritual spouses. Same thing with you women. Stop masturbating. If you're barren or you're impotent, that's signs of spiritual warfare. You need to pray and rebuke those spirits or spirit spouses. Get, it, get those prayed off of you. You know, stop taking those pills and shit because most of your problems are spiritual, right? Change your diet. Maybe stuff that you eat and need to change up your, your regimen. Start fasting, right? Um, You guys don't have control over your body in, this, in the same light women don't have control over their bodies, especially when it talks about you should fulfill your marital duties, Right? So if you got to fulfill your marital duties, you should be on your A game. That's why marriage make motherfuckers beta. Why? Because you're not about yourself anymore. It's about your wife. Yeah. You see? And, and, and I know a lot of guys, they don't like, like being in relationships, but I'm giving you a new perspective of relationships with the intent of doing right by God. It's about your woman. It's really about serving the most high. That's what's pleasing to the most high. He says, husbands should fulfill his marital duty, marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other except for mutual consent and for time. Right? Because things happen. Right? It says, by mutual consent. And that means I got to talk this through. Other than that, if y'all ain't talk this through and you withholding sex from each other because y'all angry and bitter, that's going to have a, 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 a chain effect because it says that Satan will tempt you because of your lack of control. How much people commit adultery, infidelity because of temptation? I understand in the beginning of the relationships, it's going to be a honeymoon phase. It's going to be all glitz and glamour. When that novelty wears off and you're like, oh, let's hit this shit all the time. This is nothing new. Your mind and your eyes are going to start to wonder. This is where you get tempted the most when you're in a relationship. Not when you're not in a relationship. You, you get tempted when you are in a relationship because what was free to you is now restricted. Suppressing yourself, you're under a covenant. You have to be committed. And all your life, you've been committed to yourself. I'm keeping it real with y'all. Most of the time, y'all been committed to yourself. You have not been committed to another person. You did things for other people that will benefit you. But when you're in a marriage, it's not about you. It's about God. And it's about the other person. So you learn how to be selfless. That's why guys who are trying, who are mid-tow or red pill will say that, yo, being in a relationship makes a nigga beta because you're giving up a lot of yourself and time and attention, your non-sexual energy to a woman, right? Well, I, I spoke truth, bro. So you can't say I wasn't telling you that. I, I mean, I know how to deal with a relationship and I know how to deal with women outside of a relationship. And I'm going to allow the word of God to guide me in whatever is best for me. But for you, brothers and sisters, if you choose to be in a relationship, that's up to you. If you choose to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ today, that's on you. But with that being said, leave your comments in the comment section below. I will do part two soon to continue where we left off. Peace.